I cannot believe that like just Avril, average casual dad gamers have been mind fucked into thinking that the way for them to solve this problem is or the way that you know like oh well i don't have time to play the game so the solution to me not being able to play the game is that i have to spend more money why the fuck do you have to spend more money you already bought the game get the fuck out of here it's so stupid in the beginning i want to say that i have a point i want to make and you're going to need to watch all of it to get my point and tell me if you agree or not, Watch let's the whole go. Video so there's a conversation that's been going on lately about cosmetics, their pricing structure in Diablo 4. Pretty much every day, somebody is coming into my chat and saying something along the lines of, Darth, have you seen the $65 oh. paid cosmetic horse Ooh, in Diablo that's a lot. 4? And then I have to do my response to this. So let's look at the articles that are being written currently. Let's look at the up. This is my take about it is like, I really don't give a fuck that much about it. Like it's always funny whenever they do something like this because of how ridiculous it is but like this doesn't really move the needle in terms of me being more or less interested in the game like i don't really care it's fun to laugh at though reddit posts so let's look at the conversations that are going on, on twitter and let's break down exactly what's going on with diablo 4 cosmetic microtransactions this is the primary example $65, this was posted 22 hours ago. The new Scourge mount can be purchased in a bundle mm. with 7,000 platinum for $65. And then they show right here this horse. Pretty good looking cosmetic horse. There is no way I think it's kind of stupid for $65. Like, I'm gonna be honest, I do. I think it's kind of stupid. I think they could do a better job on the horse. $65. Horse, it is not under an There's a Vitreous Stone Drake. It comes from Slab Hide in the Stone Core five man dungeon. It was released in World of Warcraft Cataclysm. It was a 1% drop rate, and the scales on it had the same color. And uh, it was free. You could just get it if you killed the boss and the item dropped. That was a long time ago rate there's no other way in the game if i got you see it myself somebody with this horse they spent 65 dollars on the bundle that in was order badass to yeah it the was horse, as well as the platinum that comes with it That's this the is one of the primary 11. examples that people will use when they talk about the pricing of cosmetics in the game so the first point i want to make is the point if people say yeah. that it is a 65 dollar paid horse skin that is disingenuous it comes with 70 dollars basically of platinum their premium yeah. currency you can argue the structure of the premium currency pricing if you want, and then you get the horse as well. One argument to be made would be there's no way to get this horse unless you buy that mm -hmm. much amount of platinum and you get it as a bonus, in which case I would agree. This horse is locked behind a $65 purchase, though you're not paying $65 only for the horse. My well, opinion, you get a bundle full of other bullshit. Yeah is I would rather cool looking items in these games, particularly games that are paid AAA games where we pay upfront pricing. I personally would prefer the best looking skins in the game to be chase related items. Well, or don't you like the fact that the reward horse from killing Uber Lilith, the hardest boss in the game, that's bugged and fucking garbage and it makes it even harder. Don't you like the fact that the reward from that is a red horse that's almost the exact same as another red horse, and they could be easily considered the exact same thing if you weren't looking closely. I mean, I think that's kind of cool, right? I mean, yeah, there you go. Because they're both red. Ward based items. However, I also understand this is a live service game, and the access to this shop and selling these different cosmetics will actually help the development of the game, though it's hard for me to say that when it is a multi-billion dollar company that owns them. So if you're asking- I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. I think for the offering of, like the actual amount of content on release for Diablo 4, was it really worth $70? I mean, I played it for a long time, but I'm also like a very hardcore gamer for that type of, of game. I think that if you compare like the single player experience for Diablo 4 on release, like for me it was worth $70. And yeah, if you play it to get to 100, obviously you got your money's worth. But man, I really feel like there wasn't a lot to it, man.
Because, like, it was the campaign, right? And then you have the dungeons, which are basically, like, the outdoor areas in that zone. Maybe, like, a couple of places are different. And, like, there's 120 dungeons, but there's really only 12 because every dungeon has 10 other dungeons. It's pretty much the exact same. And then, like, even the capstone dungeons are just the same bosses. And then you just go through a, a progression loop of killing the same thing over and over, like, at the beginning of the game. Like, was this really worth $70? I, I mean... If somebody told me, like, I bought the game and I feel like I didn't get my money's worth out of it, it's like, oh, I mean, I can see that. Yeah, it just seemed, like, very, very, like, pretty flat. I mean, like, now it's better, right? It's definitely better now. But, like, on release, it really wasn't that great, man. Me, if I get really pissed off, I know there's a lot of Reddit posts, there's a lot of articles about yeah. it. I don't tend to care that much about cosmetics with the point aside that I think the best looking cosmetics in the game, the stuff that you really want to be like, that guy looks cool, should be in-game yeah. chase achievement based items in order to have the prestige. Yeah, I mean, and these things are so cool. Like, I'm going to be honest, if these items, like, if Blizzard said that if you beat Uber Durial, you get this horse, and if you hit level 100 on a character you get that character's armor set for this, like, Chinese New Year shit, I would probably play the game. I think this stuff looks really cool. I do. I really like the way this armor looks. But it's just on the store, and so it's worth nothing to me. Kind of sad. Really, it's just kind of sad with it one of the coolest items in any game in my opinion is the party hat in runescape i think that that is a great token example of something that is a chase item mm -hmm. however with the point aside cause oh, paid cosmetics do not well. ruin the game for me however it might leave a sour taste in your mouth depending upon how you look at it because some of these cosmetics the pricing doesn't exactly make you feel respected as a player let's look at one such example that is being used as I would say the game loop doesn't make me feel respected as a player. It's the same fucking thing every single time, man. If you tolerate this kind of stuff rolling over and saying, I don't care, when is that? Does somebody expect the devs to stop doing it? Well, like, it, it's not that I'm, like, tolerating it or saying I don't care. Like, I don't, like, what am I going to do? Like, I can't make them not do this. I can't control what they're going to do. Like, I'm just... Yeah, I mean, I'm not buying it. That's my solution, is, like, I'm not buying it. And even though it looks really, really cool, I'm not going to buy it, because it's it, it's just bullshit. Fairly negative example of paid cosmetics, which I would actually agree with this one. So if you go to add-ons here, while the horse comes Ooh. with, you can see 7,000 platinum here. Let me actually move my camera. It's the top it offering, too. 7,000 platinum wow. for $65. And if you look at the platinum cost, 7,000 platinum is basically 70 bucks. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get a little bit extra. They say free, but you get more the more you pay, basically. But 10 bucks, 1,000 platinum, okay? But if you How look do at they the get away with saying that it's free if there's never an actual option to be able to buy it? Like, I feel like that's, like, kind of a scam to say that it's it's free. It's kind of like whenever you bring something out, you say it's on sale. I I don't know. Like, I, like how is that not against the law, like, somewhere in Europe? I mean, it, I, I think it kind of should be. It's deceptive. This one for $30 that gives 1,000 platinum as well, you're going to realize that these are portal cosmetics what? that are more or less recolors with some cool glowy shit around it, maybe lightning, You really tell me, bro, like, the PoE, bro, the PoE portal? Like, you open up, like, a fucking gateway into a Roman gladiatorial arena, and then, like, the two sides of it are, like, two barbarians that are fucking hulked out, holding, like, axes, and there's, like, a red portal with, like, a, you know, black statues around it, like, I, this really, like, this is from a, a, how many million dollars was put into this game? Like, how the fuck do you do this? Like, dude, the PoE portals are, like, a thousand times better than this. And I'm going to be honest, I don't use them. If I was going to buy a portal skin, I would just go back and get the Etziri portal skin, the red portals. 
There it is. I'm done. Uh, I don't want a crazy weird portal. But damn, it's cool that they have the option. Like, look at the PoE portals. Like, I, I want I want you guys to see this. You're right. Here's one. Decent, right? Came out four years ago. Not that much different. Let's look at some more. Okay, all right, all right, all right, here we go. There's one portal right there. Look at that. All the shit on the ground, everything like that. Betrayal, yep. Here's another one. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Woo. I haven't seen this. That one's cool. Yeah, it is, right? Look at that. Here's another one. Oh. Look at that. Is this bestiary? Oh, wow. That is nuts. Another one. Holy shit. Holy shit. Bro, this is like the World of Warcraft uh, starting soon or fucking like classic WoW login screen. Oh my god. So yeah, anyway, um... Am I lagging out? What the hell is all this? So yeah, anyway, back to, um... Back to this. These are class-based. So this is the rogue one. Uh -huh. Okay, this right here is the necromancer one. So you oh, get wow. a skull that pops up. This one right here is your druid one. So you get vines around it. This right here is $10 worth of platinum. And then you have another $20. So if I showed this to my dad and I said, which one do you think came from... Nah, because he would probably be able to predict that I'm, like, trying to play him into a trap, so he would probably say the shitty one. It's like, you know, like a fucking, uh, you know, like a Indiana Jones Holy Grail thing, so he would probably fucking immediately think that shit out. And, but, like, because he's like, why would you ask me that in this way? But if I asked a person that, like, wasn't ready for it, you know, guess what they'd say? Which one is the, uh, wh which one is the bullshit one? So it basically boils down to like 20 bucks for five pour those, four bucks for this pour though, and it's up to you to determine whether or not you think there's a value of four dollars for one of these pour those. All right, that's basically what it breaks down to. To be I fair, mean... however, for the people that do not believe in these cosmetics, I want to make a few points as to why cosmetics could actually be unhealthy for a game of this nature. First of all, look at the horse. One of the coolest cool. looking horses locked behind a $65 purchase. Imagine if this horse came out with different tiers, sort of like the gladiator mounts. In well, this War is the argument that I've been making for 10 years that nobody cares about. Like, is that like, if you go back and you look at a video that I did, Asmon Gold Store Mounts Wad, you will see this video real talk about store mounts. This came out eight years ago. What's up, y'all? It's me, it's your boy, Asmin Golden. Today, we're going to be talking about store mounts. Recently, the PTR has been updated to patch 6.2.2, which is the patch... There it is. See if I have any other good ones here. Their little legs are moving so fast for like half the expansion. It's like they were, it's like they, they put Sonic the fucking Hedgehog to shame. They were moving so fast and people hate that. Now, personally, I thought actually, it was cool. But I mean, the thing is, like, I complained about store mounts 10 years ago and people said I was stupid. People said, like, oh, oh, no, 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 this is good. This is good. They're funding the game.
I tried to fucking warn you guys. I was sa I, I said this is and and then also by the way, this was eleven years ago. Eleven fucking years ago. I was pissed off about these fucking store mounts. This is what they did to me, man. And everybody was laughing at me, calling me stupid. Well, who's stupid now? I was fucking right. Crap back in the day. And this was announced as your leaderboard reward for probably have the, the different tiers shaker. you make. You oh, yeah, gold, yeah, it's over there. You get a gold-based one. You make platinum. Now it's you literally have literally right, right there next to me. Platinum version of this horse they could actually do something that would drive gameplay excitement and rewards based upon a content feature upcoming instead of just a place on the leaderboard instead of having the artist work on something that is locked behind a 65 dollars paywall why not make this the reward for hitting diamond tier on a leaderboard something well, why I would you do why would you motivate people to play the game if you could motivate people to pay in the game that's just how it is about my own content is that the further that you yeah. chase the monetary value and the revenue generated with your business over increasing the value provided to the consumer, the worse your overall content becomes. I think so, that's actually a really good way to look at it. And I think he's totally right. Is that like the focus isn't really about creating a good value for the consumer. It's about creating money. And whenever your focus is on like making money rather than making good content, then people aren't going to enjoy it. It's actually really kind of common sense, obvious. But whenever you lay it out like that, it just makes sense. My argument would be that the focus on making the horse as cool as possible to drive the monetization yeah, get as many people as possible of, to buy of your in-game yeah. shop, putting the best content there so that people go there takes away from the innate value of making people go to the game in general. I think that this horse is a fantastic example of one such decision made where it's, this could be the reward for an upcoming incentivized leaderboard that has- Now I could pause this video and then play my video from eight years ago saying the exact same thing like for example i'm going around uh so like a dragon in the entire game and the only way you can get it is by paying money and so there's no other way except for it's you know completely paywalled you know to get this mount that you see all over the place and you know is this an accident of course not you know are they advertising semi like kind of subliminally advertising you know the yep I fucking said it. Hype around it that in-game players are excited to dive into, and then you hit them with, check out this cool fucking horse. The best one we've made so far, coming to Diablo 4 for free at different t tiers, depending upon your leader. Show your friends how far you got on the leaderboard. So imagine on the BlizzCon stage when they're announcing this gauntlet, instead of just show yourself where you're on the leaderboard, it's show yourself where you're on the leaderboard and get something for your goal, other than just a leaderboard icon, etc. Everywhere you go in the game, people will see this horse. It is a game that we purposely have made with other players in the world. And now those other players will know how much you're committed to our world. And you build value in the world itself. You build value and pride in your own character's achievements, which actually builds your audience retention within the game. And the longer that people are still playing the game and the longer they're in there, then they might take time to go look in your shop. Well, that's right. Because, like, here's the thing. I would have a chance. Like, right now, my chances of buying a microtransaction in Diablo 4 are 0%. And the reason why is because I'm not playing Diablo 4. Whenever I play PoE, my chances of buying a microtransaction in the league are probably like 70 to 80%.
But if the league doesn't excite me, if I don't feel like playing the game at that league, my chances of playing it are zero, of buying a microtransaction are also 0%. And that's the problem is that like they constantly put things that are really, really cool in stores rather than in the game. And guess what happens? Well, then people don't have a motivation to come back and play the game. Like, it's just not a great motivator. Hey, come back and play this game so you can spend money to use a, to, to, to run around with a cosmetic. Like, no, who gives a fuck about this? And it's like, I know people do it, but the truth is that microtransactions make more money whenever more people play the game. Like, for example, the reason why the Celestial Steed made more money than, than StarCraft II is because everybody was playing WoW. If they released the Celestial Steed today, when the game's not as popular, people wouldn't have bought it and it wouldn't have made that much money. Because the bigger target market you have, the more people that are, the, the more fish in the, in the ocean there, well, the more things that you can potentially catch. It's pretty simple. So in my opinion, there actually is a little bit of a miscalculation if you put the best looking cosmetics in these shops. Well, I don't mind selling cosmetics as a general philosophy. I think that's okay. I don't really when care. You do the best looking ones, the shit that people really want in a game that has achievements, that is when you start to get a mismatch. Then you throw in the fact that the game itself has high monetary cost associated with it from the start with a $70 price tag. Then we start to see a more clear picture of you really don't want to sell things that are too expensive that are also the best looking things in the game or at least it's just it, it's it you know what you know people say it's the best of both worlds this is like the worst of all worlds the game's overpriced the content sucks and the microtransactions are too expensive it's like at least in poe the game's pretty good and it's free but the microtransactions are overpriced okay yeah it's fine right um you have like other games where it's like the microtransactions are like, okay, well, um, Diablo 3 at least, right? Well, the game, the game sucks, but at least there's no microtransactions. It's just, that, but like with Diablo 4, it's like every single thing is the worst. How do you, how do you do this? That's my opinion as I think about it longer. You're paying them Does to rob you. Does this monetization yeah. ruin Diablo 4? No. Does the poor those no, it doesn't. ruin Diablo 4? No. It makes it Maybe worse, though. Maybe they're expensive. But is it a missed opportunity, in my opinion? I would argue that every single time that they do something like this, it makes the game worse. I'm not saying it's killing the game. It's not killing the game. But it is making it worse. Yes. So if you're asking me today what I would have implemented if I was the one running Diablo 4, this cool horse would have been done in different tiers as a reward for the leaderboard. It would have been announced at the BlizzCon stage mm -hmm. saying, here's your gold, platinum, diamond version. Yeah. Go climb, try to get it. I understand that there will always be people that will push back about anything that would then state that, hey, well, I don't have the time all day to earn the diamond horse. I'm, I'm annoyed about that. And oh, this is only content for the no lifers, just like Uber crafting. I understand that. And my response to that as a company would be get good scrub. This is an ARPG. It's in a which fucking video game. Like if you don't have time to play the video game, you shouldn't get rewarded for playing the video game. Also, like, why is the solution to that that you have to spend more of your money? Why isn't the solution something like rested experience or some sort of design that makes things easier over time, like the ICC buff? Like, why is the solution to you having limited time to play the game that saying like, well, now that you have limited time to play the game, well, now we're just going to charge you more money. It's just, it's so weird that like, that's the dichotomy that people create that like, because I'm working and making money, then the developer should charge me money 
to be able to get the rewards in the game. No, you already bought the fucking game. Like, why not just expect the game as a baseline to play better and to have better rewards? And this is the problem that a lot of people have. And I think this has been an issue for a long time. Because what the problem is, is that you have people that get focused and fixated on this kind of stuff. And they don't realize that the entire game is built around creating a funnel to the shop. That's why Lost Ark has only three Una's tasks a day that you can do. Do you think this is like a real gameplay choice? No, it wasn't. The honing rates, like everything in the game, the DNA of the game is pay-to-win DNA. Okay? It is pay-to-win DNA. And you can't, like, just reverse that and take it out because if you do that, everything else in the game unravels. That's the point, and I think this is what the issue is, is that video games that are pay-to-win are designed to be inconvenient or annoying to play without being without paying to win. That's what happens. Not everyone has time to play a game for 10 plus hours a day. Yes, the core audience should, shouldn't get the back burner, but it's also important to give options for casuals since casuals are the ones buying stuff. But if nobody has, if people don't have the option to play 10 hours a day, then why not create a better option in the game that will allow them to achieve goals at their own pace? Why is the solution to that to charge them more money? That's the dichotomy that I'm talking about. Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense. It's stupid. I, ju I literally just explained that. You need to play the game to get the rewards. Imagine that. And then yeah. I would have made the game fun so that people want to play the game. That is my opinion on this. I don't think there's anything wrong with having content locked behind actually having to play the game. In fact, I think a lot of people want to want to play the game so much to get people these want to work kinds towards of rewards. achievements. Yeah, they do, of I course. I think that's perfectly acceptable. In fact, you want items that players cannot get because they aren't good enough to get there. Yeah, it's just, it's so weird to me that, like, these casual dad Andes, like, you would imagine, like, these guys work for a living, like, you should be able to understand the value of your money more than anybody. Like, why is the solution to you not being able to play the game a whole lot, like, why shouldn't they try to provide you with a better baseline experience rather than try to expect you to give them more money because you can't play the game? What the fuck? What kind of cuck shit is this? I have all the gladiator mounts in World what of Warcraft. The fuck? And I'm not salty crying that I think it's Blizzard's fault. I think I just sucked at Arena. That is my problem to fix. I think it would have been yep. the same thing, and that would have been my counter to that argument when it comes to items like this one. At least that's my take on this situation. Well, he's totally right. I completely agree with him. Like, this is... It, it's... Honestly... I cannot believe that, like, just avril, average casual dad gamers have been mind-fucked into thinking that the way for them to solve this problem is, or the way that, you know, like, oh, well, I don't have time to play the game. So the solution to me not being able to play the game is that I have to spend more money? Why the fuck do you have to spend more money? You already bought the game. Get the fuck out of here. It's so stupid. I, it makes me so mad. It does. I, it's boomer. It doesn't even make any sense. It's crazy. Dumb as fuck for doing that. Yeah. That's gotcha logic? No? I, I don't know what it is. But yeah, there's a video. This is a great video. I, I definitely agree with them. Yeah. Many people equate money with time. I just... It's like the entire the entire paradigm of it is flawed you shouldn't have to spend more money because you don't have time to play a video game the game should be changed in a way that makes it fulfilling for you on a baseline like what the fuck like how is it there's no accomplishment if you spend 30 dollars who that what what the what, what is going on here i just i oh my god how is this happening like we're we're I, like it, I don't know why, but I'm having some kind of fucking like crisis in my mind right now, 
Because for the better part of 20 years, this has been the foundation that people base their thinking on. What's the difference between this and Fendom? Yeah, true. Like, what is this? Like, why? Why is it like this? It doesn't even make sense. It, 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 is there a, an achievement, an accomplishment in mindless grinding? I mean, that's a completely different debate. We can get into that for like three different directions, right? Uh, should there be rewards for people that like that? I personally don't. I don't really have, I don't find any value in that. Like whenever I see somebody that's grinded a really long achievement, I can be like, wow, that's pretty impressive that somebody did that. But like, I'm not really going to give a fuck about it, if that makes sense, you know? You work for money and can't play, and then you pay money because you can't play enough, and then you need to work to make more money, make up for the money that you spend. This is, yes. I just, I don't understand how this happened. How the fuck did this happen? As someone who's bought cosmetics or bought gotcha rolls, I've never done it because I didn't have time. It's literally just because that was the only way to obtain those things. If you're mad that you have to work hard in the game for something, you also complain about having to work. It just seems like a complete fallacy. Well, not really, because like, so people complete menial tasks at a job for money. And really, it's not that people are complaining Whenever they say that you have to you have to work for something in a game, what they're really saying is that the reward loop for the game isn't worth it. That's really what they're saying. It's not about whether they have to work for it or not, because I think that with all of those people, they can probably think of multiple instances. You could ask them and they'll be able to come up with multiple instances of whenever they did work for something in a game and they felt good about it. So it's not about... It's kind of like what I was saying about like the problem with price isn't necessarily the price number, it's the value proposition. That's why people would pay $100 for something like Baldur's Gate or Elden Ring or Grand Theft Auto 6, but they don't want to pay that much money for Immortals of Avenum or for Diablo 4. And what's the difference there? I mean, they're all games, so that's clearly not the common denominator. So the problem is the value proposition. And the value proposition for these uh, these grinds and games aren't fun. It's not rewarding. Cosmetics should just be able to be bought with currency earned in the game and bought with real money. Oh, I don't know. If you can buy, like, this is my perspective with, like, any cosmetic that you get in a game that you, uh, that you can buy, right? Is that it means nothing. Like, I have a really good Honkai Star Rail account, and it means literally nothing. Because I just spent money in the game, and because I spent money, my characters are stronger. There's no skill to that. There's no effort involved. There is no real planning for that. It was just you spend money and then you win. Also, for reference, work in a game shouldn't actually be work. Work uh, in a game should be something that's fun and fulfilling to do. Well, ideally, in real life, your work should be fun and fulfilling too. Or at least fulfilling. Fun is much more hard to describe. But, you know, you should hopefully work at a job that you find fulfilling too. I mean, that's the best case scenario. I mean, obviously, it's not perfect. But uh, you know, it's not always what happens, but you would hope that. You said earlier, this horse on the shop is, is on the shop, therefore it's worthless. Yeah, it is. You get a bunch of other players telling you your account is cool and that's it. I just can't believe that people hold value in that. It's just, it's so sad to see what's happened, man. It really is. $65 helps with the development of the game. Yeah, I mean, as I said, man, like it's really sad because like if I go and I look at some of the uh, items, these like Chinese New Year cosmetics... I'm really not even, I'm not joking, I'm not lying whenever I say that if these things were obtainable, like if I had to kill Uber Duriel in the season to get this, I'd probably go, I'd go back and I'd play the game again. Because this is really, I think this is really fucking cool, man. And then like, if you go back and you look at some of these other sets that they have, let me see if I can pull it up. Um, He did go through some of these, right? Yeah, he did. Like, dude. That is fucking awesome. That's so cool. So it's like, yeah, I would go back and earn this, but I don't want to go back and just buy it. You're not the target audience for these. It's the three hours a week players. I guess so, but it's just weird to see, man. It really is. Honkai Star Rail is actually not that bad because it's inherently single player, but obviously there's arguments for why microtransactions in a single player game, but at least Hoyoverse reinvests back into their games. There is definitely a spectrum of... Like... Spending money in Honkai Star Rail feels better than spending money in Diablo 4. Like, I'll tell you that. I think it does.